Welcome to another surgical discussion video. Here we shall be discussing hemostasis, surgical bleeding and blood transfusion. Before undertaking any operative procedure, it is essential to check all the lab investigations and necessary to see that the results are acceptable. A special note on the CBC and the coagulation profile. In the likely event of coagulopathies, an open procedure may be undertaken with caution. But if there is a coagulopathy, one should not proceed with a laparoscopic procedure. During any procedure, avoid blunt avulsion of any unknown structure. It's always safe to apply selective energy to the area that is needed to be divided. Let's not be blind when we do that. Clearly identify the structures which you are dividing. And if you are dividing vascular structures, you need to have a ligation on both sides prior to actually div dividing. Different methods are used in the OR for control of hemorrhage. Mechanical methods, energy devices, procoagulants, and finally blood transfusions and blood products as indicated. The mechanical methods used for hemostasis prolong the vasoconstriction and at the same time maintain it. They also cause endothelial injury thus promoting platelet aggregation and fibrin formation. Fibrin acts basically as a superglue between the platelets to completely seal off the rent in the blood vessel. Direct pressure may be applied either digitally or by an instrument such as artery forceps or at the same time it could even be applied by packs, for example pre-peritoneal packing. This tamponade stops the bleeding and also helps visualization of the area. Again it depends on the size of the bleeder and the time that the pressure is applied to cause the hemostasis. Pre-peritoneal packing is very commonly employed in trauma and it does wonders. When one comes back after 48 hours to remove the pack, it's very rare to see a bleeding. Ligature, application of the suture in the form of transfixation or an endo loop. They all have the same principle. But one should be careful to avoid traction on the knot once the knot is thrown and squared. One should also apply caution when there is a bulky, bul uh, sorry, a bulky pedicle. It's safer to go in for a transfixation then. Again, if the pedicle is too bulky, don't think the transfixation will do the trick. Because if the transfixation is done poorly, it may also happen that within a few hours, the edema of the pedicle will reduce and the bleeding might start again. Endoscopic clips are made of titanium. They come in various sizes. And it's required that both blades should be seen when one is applying the clip. Again, if there is an inattentive use of the clip applicator, it may result in ischemic necrosis of an organ, perforations or even lacerations of tissues. Again, with endoscopic clips, it is always safer to skeletonize the blood vessel prior to application of the clips. Staplers may be deployed if the tissues are too large. Even the staplers come in various sizes. Energy devices basically use either electrical energy or ultrasonic energy. Both of them are a predictable method of delivering energy to obtain hemostasis by thermal tissue destruction. There are certain changes occurring depending upon the temperature that is applied to the tissues. At 45 degrees Celsius, it is the usual temperature at which most of us take a warm bath. There is uncoiling and again a re annealing of the collagen. So the opposed edges fuse by covalent bonding. 45 degrees Celsius usually doesn't cause much harm to normal tissues. At 60 degrees Celsius, there is an irreversible protein denaturation and the coagulation necrosis begins. One can note this because the tissues get blanched. 
and this is what usually happens when one drinks a very hot tea or coffee you can see the same thing happening to your palate if the temperature reaches 80 degrees celsius there is a carbonization leading to dry shrunk tissues and you can see this when the cautery is being applied at a very high temperature this is what happens collaterally at 90 degrees celsius to 100 degrees celsius there is a vaporization of the water of the cell and when this happens the cell will vaporize before it is getting coagulated so this is the principle that is used in cutting above 125 degrees celsius there is a complete oxidation of protein and lipid and this will form an eschar so these different temperatures will tell you what happens when there is a cutting a coagulation and what even happens collaterally so if there is a collateral damage because of heat the tissues that are heated to 45 degrees celsius do not have much of damage whereas those which are heated to 60 degrees celsius will have damage this also makes you remember that while using your energy devices the tips of your instruments get quite hot so the next moment if you touch the tip to a normal tissue you are inducing thermal damage there but you cannot visualize it immediately it is visualized later alternating current is used when electrical energy is deployed for hemostasis the circuit is formed when the electrosurgical unit or the ESU delivers a current to the active electrode the current reaches the patient and returns from the patient to the ESU by the indifferent electrode now one should ensure that the grounding pad is very large to avoid cautery burns this is because the energy can dissipate over a large surface area if the tissue that is held in between the two contacts is very large the heat generated will be less therefore you can even alter the heat generated by changing the waveform of the current or the amount of tissue that is being held for cutting as we have seen earlier the temperature is 90 to 120 degrees celsius and for cutting one uses a very high frequency with a lower voltage difference when the tissues need to be coagulated one uses a lower frequency but a very high voltage because it takes time to generate the heat so you will also notice that when you use the coagulation portion it will take some time to coagulate whereas the cutting occurs almost immediately a word of caution here that the coagulation mode can actually mimic the cut mode if the surface area of the instrument is too small for example if you use the back end of the hook instead of using the tip because when you use the tip there is a larger surface area when you use the shoulder it's only a pinpoint while using monopolar cautery there is only one active pole which is touching the patient the other pole is the grounding electrode in bipolar cautery the active electrode is intermittently opposed to the return electrode in a forceps type of arrangement so the current passes between the two electrodes to complete the circuit thus the flow through the remaining tissues the rest of the body is very minimal the ligature sealing system uses a bipolar current which is modified by the feedback in the electrosurgical unit so a bipolar and the ligature is the same procedure but the difference lies in the fact that as the resistance in the tissues change the energy delivered is modified so that you can cause the sealing of the collagen and elastin but there is no eschar formation so you maintain the amount of energy being transferred through the tissues to prevent an eschar with overheating Try this when you are doing a cautery the next time 
when you use a monopolar or a bipolar. As you keep increasing the energy and the time, you will have an Ashkar formation at one degree. Whereas when you are using a Liga Shore, you never see this kind of a process. It is a very nice clean cut and a perfect seal because the energy delivered is constantly modified based on the resistance of tissues. And as you know, the, the more liquid or the more wet the tissues are, the better they conduct and the drier they get, the lesser they conduct. The quartz clocks used to have a piezoelectric crystal. The fascinating thing about the crystal is the piezoelectric effect. That if you pass current through a piezoelectric crystal, the crystal keeps vibrating. Alternatively, if the crystal is made to vibrate at a certain frequency, an electrical current is generated through the crystal. Therefore, a piezoelectric ceramic is an element which when electricity is passed through starts vibrating. Usually they vibrate at different rates. The ones which they use in surgery vibrate at rate of 55,500 Hz. That means so many cycles per second. Now the piezoelectric ceramic is glued on to a metallic blade. Therefore, when the piezoelectric ceramic vibrates, the metallic blade will vibrate also. And thus, when it oscillates, it generates a friction and shear of the tissue which is held in between the blades. And this produces heat. And this is the reason it is called a harmonic scalpel. The ultrasonic energy induces a very high frequency, more than 20,000 hertz. And the frequency definitely is reduced because the metal of the, bl of the blade is adding a weight to the crystal. This causes a mechanical vibration at cellular level, creating friction and shear and heat generation. And this will then cause the cutting and hemostasis as required. Super glue is a cyanoacrylate and tissue glue that is used is medical grade cyanoacrylate. It is binds to the raw surfaces of the open bleeders and causes a tamponade effect by completely occluding the blood vessel. It acts immediately once it polymerizes and this polymerization is faster in the presence of water and blood. Surgery cell is oxidized reconstituted cellulose. It comes in various forms like nunit or fibrillar or the classical surgery cell. This basically forms an absorbable hemostatic matrix and this matrix imitates the plated plug. It also acts by exciting the uh, factor 7 by the uh, extrinsic pathway which will then go along with tissue thromboplastin to hasten the coagulation process. Various biological agents may also be used for hemostasis such as topical thrombin. Now this will facilitate the formation of fibrin clots and further activate the coagulation cascade. It takes advantage of this natural physiological process. Thus by using thrombin you avoid a foreign body reaction and even an inflammatory reaction. But there is a small problem with thrombin that if thrombin is used it will usually bypass the intrinsic and the extrinsic and concentrate mainly on the common pathway. If thrombin enters into larger vessels there is a chance of DIC. Fibrin sealants are prepared from cryoprecipitate mainly containing fibrin and they also contain gel foam as a vehicle. So gel foam acts as a tamponade effect and when the blood flow occurs in between the gel foam molecules the fibrin starts getting as a seal in between the platelets. Platelet sealants such as Vitagel which is a very unique combination and has a very nice delivery system of using two syringes in one trigger kind of a gun. 
it is a mixture of microfibular collagen and thrombin on one side with the patient's plasma derived fibrinogen and platelets on the other side and both of these mix and then form a seal the collagen and the thrombin are usually bovine derived whereas the plasma of the patient is autologous these when combined will then form a unique and a quick clot which helps in the hemostatic process. We have seen the various intraoperative methods that can be employed but it is very essential for a postoperative monitoring also. One can monitor the drain, the vital signs especially the heart rate, can repeat the CBC and check the pattern of the hemoglobin readings and also transfuse blood products as necessary. One shouldn't forget that if there is too much of bleeding may also shift the patient back to the OR for a second operative intervention. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, email me.